Hi everyone. Uh, this week's video was inspired by the news that I read yesterday about the passing of independent filmmaker Nick Zed. Uh, Nick Zed, for anyone who's not familiar with uh, his work, uh, was a key figure in the New York underground film scene of the 1980s and coined the term cinema of transgression to refer to a you know, group of uh, films and filmmakers uh, coming out of New York at that time, kind of living and working on the Lower East Side in the 1980s, working very much under the radar, under the, uh, you know, uh, under underground, uh, you know, off the radar of uh, certainly Hollywood and even the more commercial independent cinema. Uh, and I think, you know, these films were linked by these kind of very uh, transgressive, rebellious um, ideas and, and using whatever equipment was available, you know, eight millimeter film, 16 millimeter video, uh, very much done on a, a kind of guerrilla style, low budget type of filmmaking, uh, you know, shooting around the streets of New York, uh, using whatever was available, casting other artists in, in the films. And, um, you know, and, and I was thinking about all this because of the idea of, a, of film movements and the value of applying names uh, to them, when you start to see a group of films or filmmakers emerge that share some kind of connection. And, you know, it, the thing that I, the value that I see in giving a name to a film movement is that it can help uh, draw these connections. It can help kind of uh, look at what sim similarities, what commonalities exist between a group of films or filmmakers and, you know, whether that's uh, external factors that they're responding to or whether it's a deliberate goal to create films that have, uh, that, that share similar uh, ideas or approaches. Um, you know, I think uh, uh, regardless of the specifics, I think that by giving a name to a film movement, it can help uh, give it a sense, give a, a sense of cohesion to thinking about the films um, being, you know, that, that are being uh, talked about as as part of it. And what what I think is interesting about film movements is how different they can be. And I don't just mean in the obvious ways um, that you might think, but just how movements can form around very different aspects of making a film. You know, sometimes again they could be. Um, a shared set of goals that the, the films are trying to achieve, such as subverting mainstream values, or it could be describing films that are made very much on the cheap with available uh, equipment and, you know, ultra low budgets, or it can refer to, you know, stylistic and aesthetic uh, aims. Uh, you know, so there's, there's a lot of different ways that films can become interconnected this way. And what I, again, what I think is the value of giving a name to that is that it can help to uh, think about those similarities and kind of give a, um, a bit of a, a structure to talking about the films. And, 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 and then once you're able to do that, to kind of highlight and, uh, and, and even celebrate the unique qualities of, of, that, uh, of, the, of that group of uh, films. I think, of course, it's important to emphasize, though, that even if you are, you know, um, talking about films or filmmakers that are part of a movement, that's not to um, suggest that they aren't individually uh, still highly unique, personal, and uh, you know, achieving their own their own goals and and uh, aims at the same time. But I do think when you look at, uh, for example, uh, somebody like Nick Zed and the cinema of transgression movement, uh, it, it's, it's interesting to look at what these films shared in common and how that was related to the time and place in which they were being made that uh, gave them a sense of, uh, kind of a sense of uh, cohesion and, and uh, commonality with each other. But I, I think that really does remain one of the biggest values in talking about film movements. Uh, again, whether it's something deliberate that a group of filmmakers sets out to accomplish, like perhaps the Dogma 95 movement that had very clear guidelines and was uh, 
provided a way of going into the production or whether it's something that's applied kind of after the fact and looking back at, at films that maybe in retrospect share a lot of, um, uh, you know, a lot of uh, consistency in, uh, in certain ways. Anyway, that's just a few thoughts on the value of naming film movements. Uh, and I would say if you are not, if you haven't uh, seen any of Nick Zed's films, this might be a good time to go out and see what, uh, see what you can see of his work. I think it's really, um, really original, really daring. And, you know, he's a true independent voice that uh, I think is, uh, you know, really, really a, a a vital, a vital part of independent filmmaking. Anyway, thank you for watching this video and I will talk to you later.